Every time I saw Gamli with Dushik, I couldn't help but think about Startup. So at the beginning of the episode, we get the sound of Gongjin. We hear the register printing out a receipt. We hear waves crashing, fish grilling, etc., etc. This was a good way to start the episode, not only with the sounds, but also with a little bit of comedy. Because Heijin, she was trying out new clothes, but to get them, she has to purchase them online. Dushik, who was the delivery guy in this episode, he's actually taking the job because someone broke their arm. And every time we would see Heijin try out new clothes, we would also see Dushik yelling out, Miss Yoon, Miss Yoon, Miss Yoon. He was also singing at one point. And I think we can all relate on buying a lot of stuff online or we know someone who buys a lot of stuff online. I can relate. Next, Heijin is heading to Seoul with Dushik. Uh, Dushik, he invites three uninvited guests, three grandmas. One wanted to do something food related. I think she wanted to buy marinated fish. The second one wanted to attend her grandson's birthday party. The third one was told to watch some kids. The car ride was hilarious and I think we can all relate to it. I would not have been mad if the entire episode was that car ride. And we can all relate. Parents nagging. Grandparents nagging. Uh, your parents trying to feed you. Doesn't matter if you're driving or not. Singing. Loud music. Someone always has to go to the bathroom and yeah, it's, it's so awesome to see something so relatable and that, and again, that car ride was so relatable. And then at one point during the car ride, there was a red car that cut Hidgen off without signaling. Hidgen was pissed off. She drove fast, drove up to the red car, told the guy what he did and pretty much told him off. But the guy was really rude until Gamli came out and started cussing him out. And what she said to him was, you know, came out of nowhere. She said, I'm going to cut your intestines and lungs and play jump rope with them and pretty much call him an asshole. I'm like, dang, you don't want to mess with her. Then we get to Seoul. Uh, Dushik, he gets dropped off in front of a building. It's the Health and Medical Center Seoul New Generology Clinic. Now, okay, so this could be his regret from episode two, because remember in episode two, he was holding a suit jacket. We didn't know what it meant, but maybe at this place, he could have had a job there. I don't know. This is just a guess, or maybe he knows someone there. But yeah, I want to know more about that. And then also for Hijin, she's just attending her friend's wedding. And then what's funny was the drive back to Gongjin. I just love how Hijin and Dushik were basically nagging towards each other about the AC, about the skyscrapers. Oh, this has the best pasta. Um, Dushik wants to eat ramen on the boat. You know, just like complaining about stuff, nagging about stuff, but also craving some stuff. They were basically talking to each other like they were a married couple. Then we get to the litter bug. So first someone was littering. If you litter, you're going to get fined 1 million won. Now for Hwa Jung, she told Dushik about this and what's funny is that these two went to Yongguk's uh, workplace, demanded him to go to City Hall and get a surveillance camera and the way they did it was pretty hilarious. Like they went to his workplace, basically told him what happened, uh, told him that the evidence is in the trash, threatened to open the trash in his workplace. I mean, you can see everyone already covering their nose and the bags were not even open. So can you imagine if they did open it? So basically it was their way of getting him to go to City Hall and get surveillance cameras. And towards the end, he he got him. So um, it's not really a oh my gosh type of moment. Again, this is not a uh, thriller suspense drama, but it was a nice comedy moment. Then we get to what I would call the highlight of the episode, which also reminded me of Startup. This is where Gamli needs dental treatment. Hijin basically told her that she needs stronger dentals. Uh, but once Gamli found out how much she had to pay, she was very stubborn and not paying it. And she was like, you know what? I'm not going to get it. I'm just going to use my weak teeth. But because she was so stubborn, Hijin just confidently said, OK, well, if you're not going to pay for it, leave, just leave, which got Gamli very upset. And Dushik, he went back to her office and basically asked her, why did you act like that? Hijin, she didn't hold back. 
not only just talking to Gamli, but also talking to Dushi about, hey, this dental clinic is not a convenience store. It's not where you can come in and get what you want. And Dushi, he basically says, well, people can't change. Well, people can. That's only if they want to. Then later on that night, Dushi calls Heijin and told her that, hey, I'm going to get the money and pay for the treatment. But don't tell Gamli. Just tell her that it was a cheaper treatment. But for Heijin, she kind of says no to that because um, she, she takes pride in being a dentist. And she takes full responsibility on everything that she does. So if she takes on that responsibility, it's almost like breaking a rule. But then she does have a strong argument though, but I mean, you can agree or disagree with her. She says that parents should not go through pain to save money for their kids. And then we see a flashback of young Hijin finding out that her mom is sick. And then we get another flashback at the beginning of this episode where they were in Seoul. Duchi did kind of guess that Hijin was jealous that other people got married. But it wasn't the people that got married she was looking at. It was the mom. And we know that her mom passed away. And then relating to that, we see Gamli getting a call from her family in the U.S. saying that money is very tight on their end. And also her grandkid who is attending Harvard University. The tuition? Yeah, it's no joke. And then later on, Hijin does talk to Gamli. Well, first she had a meal and then later on they start talking. Uh, Heijin does confess of her opinion on why should parents or grandparents, well, a parent in general, um, why would they go through pain just so no one knows about it? You know what I mean? And she does ask Gamli to go back to the clinic, which she does, and she does get the dental treatment. And then eventually Gamli does call Dushi to get her porridge and tells him that, hey, I got the treatment. And also tells him that she was wrong about Hijin. She may act cold on the outside. She may be stubborn. But she's a nice person. And Gamli, this is where she really does understand Hijin's side of the story. And also we see Dushi kind of understanding her more now. Then towards the end of the episode, the lights goes off. Hijin was washing her hair during that time. She calls for help. Dushi comes in with a flashlight and candles. And... Basically, these two just start talking, having ice cream. What we didn't know was actually towards the very end of the episode where Dushik found the other heel that Hijin was missing from the first episode. And we see that, he, well, first he found it. Then he went online to how to clean the heel. And then when the lights went off and he was at her house, he secretly put the heel in her closet. So I thought that was a good touch on seeing the relationship between these two build up more because we know that the relationship of these two it's developing step by step though so this is a good step so my impression on this episode it was another good episode another smiling from cheek to cheek episode um i do like the fact that dushik and hijin were thinking about each other the first one was hijin thinking about their time on the rock she slipped we have that romantic moment and for dushik he was thinking of the car ride back to uh, Gongjin where Heijin adjusted his seat so he can sleep better. So the romance is getting there. It's not quite there yet, but we know it's going to get there. I'm going to say this again. I couldn't help but think about startup. I mean, just seeing Dushik with Gamli, you can't help but think of Jipyong and grandma and startup. Just can't help it. <laughs> so the one question I have is... What was Dushi doing at the medical clinic when he got dropped off, when, when he was in Seoul? I mean, in my mind, I'm still thinking maybe there was a job that he could have taken and made a lot more money. I mean, he did ha have a regret. He was holding a suit jacket in episode two. But now, well, now thinking about it, he had a dad. Maybe his dad is there. Oh... And yeah, that's pretty much the gist of the episode and my review. If there's anything I might have missed, please leave it in the comments below. Other than that, if you like this video, leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. See ya.